everybody knows the term Big Bang. That is where it all started. And according to uh, standard cos uh, cosmology, we describe that as an expansion of the universe. Um, but if you only stick to that standard um, description of the cosmology, you don't really get the explanation for all, where all the particles are coming from, you know, the particles that you and I are made mm. out of, and the particles that we see maybe as dark matter. Um, for that, you really need a cosmology that is connected in some way with uh, quantum physics. And I know that Niels Bohr, he already had, you know, comments and thoughts about this many, many years ago. Um, and you have pioneered this field over many, many years. So um, what are the new insights in, uh, into this? Well, there's, uh, there's new insights and there's old ideas mm. that go back uh, to the time of Bohr. Um, the, what we're working on now is connecting the quantum with the cosmos. So you think of quantum as being related to very small objects. And the cosmos is everything, very large objects, inner space and outer space, the quantum and the cosmos. It's not uh, obvious that the science of the smaller, smallest things, the quantum, would be related and important for the science of the largest mm. thing, for cosmology. But this was realized long ago, in fact, by Niels Bohr, who was one of the pioneers in uh, developing the quantum. I gave a colloquium at MIT in the 80s, and Philip Morrison, who was a retired professor there, who had been at Berkeley in the late 1930s as a graduate student, told me he was at a colloquium that Bohr gave in Berkeley. And at the end of the colloquium, someone asked Bohr what he thought about new developments in cosmology. And Bohr said, we can't understand cosmology. We can't understand the universe until we incorporate the quantum into cosmology. Mm -hmm. And that has been my approach to cosmology for my entire career. But then what is really the definition of cosmology? I would think that's just, you know, the universe on the larger scale. Why, why, why would the large scale care about the particles that are, you know, moving around this uh, room or, you know, so, so, so how do you define cosmology uh, and, and why is it so different from, or is the same, or, or is it, it has to be connected with quantum physics? Like, yeah, can you, can you yeah. bring up these different pieces and explain? Well, I, I would define cosmology as the study of the origin and evolution of the universe and also what's in the universe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And as we look around in the universe today, we see that most of the universe is dark energy and dark matter, a type of energy that we don't understand and a type of matter that we don't understand. So Einstein's theory of gravity is the basis for the Big Bang. It can explain the origin of space and time and the expansion of space, but it can't account for what's in space the radiation and the matter out of which we are all made and the dark matter without incorporating the quantum. So in, like in, so in Einstein's equations, that is basically something we have to put in by hand, you can say, like some terms you say, with this kind of matter content and this, then the evolution of the universe looks like this, but it doesn't really describe where these terms are coming from or, or what are the content, right? Is that That's correct? Right, That's right, right. So Einstein's equation, like every equation, mm. has a left-hand side and a right-hand side. Yeah. The left-hand side describes geometry, expansion of space, the evolution of space and time. And the right-hand side uh, is where the quantum enters. It describes interactions of particles. What is the universe made of? And that is the connection between inner space on the right side of Einstein's equations and outer space, mm. which is on the left side of Einstein's equation. And I'd also point out that the universe seems enormous to us today, and it is by human standards, but in the Big Bang, the universe was once very much smaller. It was much hotter than it is today. And to understand the evolution of the early universe, we have to understand how matter behaves at extremely high temperatures and energy. But we can recreate those energies here on Earth. This is done, for instance, at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland, mm. where today in terrestrial laboratories, we can recreate the conditions of the Big Bang as it existed 
a billionth of a second after the bang. Wow. So not only do we have theories about what happened in the early universe, but we can recreate the conditions and test those theories about what sorts of particles were produced, how they interacted. We can reproduce those, reproduce those conditions in terrestrial laboratories today. So are there some parts that the universe you know, tells us, you know, dark matter, for example, we clearly have a lot of dark matter, but we have not been able to create that in the laboratory so far. Why is that, if you say that we are able to, to, to create these very early moments, we should be able to create the whole particle spectrum, but there seems to be some, some problems. We have not yet been able to create dark matter. Um, it was an expectation that the Large Hadron Collider would produce dark matter and we would find evidence of dark Why matter. Why would that be an expectation or was it just a hope or...? or? It was a hope and an expectation oh, okay. and uh, we worked on that for many years and uh, the universe, as it turns out, had another idea <laughs> and we don't know what it is. Uh, but then, you know, it's the journey that's great and once we understand everything about the universe, I'm out of a job. So, you know, it, it's good that there are still mysteries behind yeah. in the universe. So do we, so it is clear that, that we don't know these things yet, but if it's only just, you know, a single dark matter particle that you're after, uh, it is maybe difficult to see how that could open up for, you know, other branches of physics. Like maybe there is a whole dark universe out there with, you know, now I'm just speculating with, with dark matter atoms and stuff like yeah. that. Something that we could uncover or, or use once we understand it is 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 that like a you know a goal or think that or or is it only the particular idea of figuring out what dark matter is or, or do you hope to to see more grow from 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 that study? Well, this, in the simplest idea, there would be only one dark matter Just particle, one dark matter particle, but uh, there could be an entire universe of particles that we don't see that mm -hmm. we haven't yet discovered an entire dark sector. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And if you were a dark matter particle, you would look around and say, gee, most of the universe is made up of dark, your type of matter. Yeah. I, I would not see you. Yeah, right? but, but there's just a small part <laughs> that we don't yeah, understand, exactly. and, and that's our universe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it may be naive to think that there's only one dark matter particle. It could be a whole universe of dark yeah. matter particles. And, and it's ideas like that that I find really exciting. That so going into the particular work that you have been doing, what the kind of models and what kind of theoretical considerations have you been doing to, mm -hmm. to create these uh, dark well, matter we, particles? The only thing we know about dark matter yeah. is that it has gravitational interactions. It responds mm -hmm. to gravity and it produces a gravitational field. Can you make an example how you how you see these dark yeah, matter? Yeah, yeah. So we deduce the existence of dark matter by seeing how normal matter like stars behave. So if we wouldn't see the sun, we would uh, since the Earth goes around the sun, we could deduce that there is some force of gravity, some mm. massive body at the center of the solar system yeah. causing the Earth to remain in yeah. orbit about the sun. Yeah. So we can measure the orbit of stars about the center of a galaxy mm -hmm. and see there must be much more matter than we can see in stars mm. producing the gravitational field to keep the stars in orbit. So we've deduced the existence of dark matter by looking at the gravitational effect that it has on things that we do see. Mm. So we know that dark matter produces a gravitational mm -hmm. field and it should respond to gravity. The only thing we know is that in the interactions of dark matter with normal matter, there's a gravitational attraction. Mm -hmm. So that would make it very difficult to actually detect the nature of dark matter. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to produce it in the laboratory. And the question comes up, how would it, how would it have been produced in the Big yeah. Bang? Yeah. And that would be through some gravitational interaction, and that's what I've been working on, how to produce it only by gravitational interaction. So can I, can I think about it as, since we have not been able to make dark matter in the laboratories, it, it means that we need higher energies, right? And if we think about higher energies in the terms of the universe, like the history of the universe, does it mean that we have to go to earlier times? 
so dark, so dark matter, you know, formed as, you know, like maybe it was, you know, the spectrum of the first particles that were forming and then it cascaded or decayed or you got mm -hmm. like all the other particles or how is it con uh, connected with all the standard model, uh, model particles? Well, it's today? connected with the standard model. Again, if you look at CERN, we have mm -hmm. not been able to produce dark matter up to the energies that CERN can mm -hmm. produce, up to the temperatures that they can produce in the collisions of particles. Mm -hmm. So it could be that the next accelerator being built or a higher energy version of CERN mm -hmm will be able to produce the dark matter particle. And the higher the energy, the higher the temperature, mm -hmm. the earlier in the history of the universe the particle yeah. would yeah. have emerged. Yeah. So if we, in the laboratory, uh, we only now think about high energies, and now, now we can see that we can map that to some kind of time during the, the evolution of the universe, right? So does the, does the fact that the universe expands very quickly at early times, does it also play a role in how the structures are forming, what kind of particles that are forming? Uh, well, if you think about inflation and, and mm -hmm. you know, going that, that way, right, um, you have massive and very quick expansion. Uh, which might also play other roles in this uh, picture here. Is that, uh, yeah, is that it, true? It could be that the dark matter is produced during inflation, okay. uh, which happened much earlier mm -hmm. than we can reproduce in a laboratory today. But we see evidence of what happened during inflation by looking at the radiation that was a remnant of the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. it, now it's in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum and we see fluctuations in the temperature of the universe that gives us an idea of what happened 10 to the minus 35 seconds after the bang, when the temperatures and energies were just amazing, far beyond yeah. usual human experience. But we see the evidence today of what happened in the universe earlier than we can reproduce in the laboratory. So if you want to go to like a, a particular time in the evolution of the universe and, and uh, think about that is the uh, you know, time that I'm going to focus on, or this is where my physical models you know, is going to operate, this is where I'm going to you know, form my, my dark matter particle, where is your mind and, and work focused right now in this you know, massive range of time and length scales? Uh, yeah, it, it's trying to connect the physics of what went on to produce the mm. particle with physics that's beyond what we call the standard model of particle physics mm -hmm. that encompasses all the types of particles and interactions that we know. So trying to understand dark matter may be a key to going beyond what we know now. So that's one of the exciting things about it. It could be a portal through which we can glimpse physics beyond what we understand now. It's really the search for new knowledge. <laughs>